Hi, my name is Omar Khorshid. I'm a cloud engineer at Cloudpedia. I'm going to talk about deploying a typical SAP system on GCP and also how to design high availability and disaster recovery for SAP deployments on GCP. In this video, we will be covering three topics. Building blocks for SAP deployments, guidance for SAP infrastructure, and SAP high availability and disaster recovery and data management. Let's first start with the required services in Google Cloud Platform for a typical SAP deployment. For each SAP architectural layer, there are services that can be used to deploy these layers. For the networking layer, many Google Cloud services can be used, like Virtual Private Cloud, or VPC in short, which is used to manage networking for Google Cloud resources. Dedicated and Partner Interconnect, which is a service to provide connectivity between your on-premise network and your Google Cloud network through a direct physical connection or a supported service provider. Cloud Firewall Rules, which lets you allow or deny connections to or from your virtual machines. Cloud VPN, which enables the connection between your local or on-premise network and your virtual private cloud network through IPsec VPN connection. And for the database and application layers, Compute Engine is used to deploy VM instances for running both the database and SAP NetWeaver application servers. For the primary and secondary storage, there are multiple services and solutions that can be employed like Persistent Disk, Cloud Firestore, Cloud Storage, and Marketplace solutions like Elastifile, NetApp Cloud Volumes, and Actifio. And for the resources management layer, managing things like projects, billing, console access, logging, and monitoring can be done using Cloud Console, Cloud Monitoring, Stack Driver, Cloud Shell, Cloud APIs like Cloud Billing API and Cloud Logging. For access control and security, services like Cloud IM, which is Cloud Identity and Access Management, Key Management Service, and the Cloud Security Command Center can be used for administration and access control. Also for deployment and job automation, services like Cloud Deployment Manager, Cloud SDK, Cloud Build, and the Cloud Source Repository can be employed to automate SAP deployments and automate stopping and starting machines and taking snapshots. And last but not least, Data API integration, where services like Cloud Data Fusion, BigQuery, Cloud Dataflow, Apigee API can be used to integrate data between SAP and non-SAP systems with big data platforms for machine learning and AI. Now let's see how SAP deployments can be architected on Google Cloud. Architecting SAP deployments has different topics and aspects to decide the requirements of the system in GCP. For example, the sizing. Whether the SAP architecture is a two-tier or a three-tier determines the number of VMs. The instance types, where the certified VM shapes for SAP HANA and SAP NetWaver decides the specs of the VM like the CPU technology, number of cores, and memory. Image types, where the standard or custom SAP images decide the software, additional OS packages for security and database. Storage, where the performance and the input output and disaster recovery requirements decide the primary and backup storage 
services and locations. Deployment locations, where the required J location of the VMs and the high availability and disaster recovery requirements besides the, the regions and zones of the VMs. Lastly, the network and security where the VPC, subnets, and firewall rules are configured according to the access and authentication requirements of the SAP system. So first, the sizing of the SAP deployment. This diagram shows a comparison between the structure of a two-tier and a three-tier deployment. For the two-tier deployment, all components of the system run on a single VM. Both the SAP application server and the database server are hosted on the same VM. Where in a three-tier deployment, each of the NetWeaver application servers and the database server running on a separate VM. This is a list of the certified SAP Compute Instance types of high memory and memory optimized machines to run SAP HANA database servers. Also for running SAP application servers, this is a list for SAP certified machine types. Custom machines can also be used instead of predefined machine types, if required. According to SAP certifications, these custom machines have to have from uh, 32 to 64 virtual CPUs and at least 6.5 gigs of memory for each virtual CPU. And for selecting the machine image types, most customers will have their own image standards or operating systems like SUSE or Red Hat. The I.O. performance of the persistent disks varies and depends on many factors like the disk size, number of CPUs, and the I.O. block size. In case the disk was attached to multiple machines, each of these machines in the environment gets a share of the disk performance limit. And there's no need to warm up the disks or stripe multiple disks to achieve maximum performance. And for scalability, hard drives scale with the size and number of CPUs of the attached machine, but solid state drives scale linearly Till it reaches a limit either for the volume or for the compute engine instances. This diagram here shows the multiple options to choose a primary storage service. For example, if multi zone high availability isn't required, then for the block level, resistant disks can be used. And for the network file system, cloud file store can be used. But if multi zone storage is required, Elastifile software on a self managed storage can be used for a multi regional disaster recovery approach. And Google managed Elastifile service or a third party like NetApp Cloud Volumes for a single region approach. And for secondary storage and backup, resistant disk snapshots and cloud storage can be used for boot disk and database backups. Cloud file store and cloud storage can be used for the SAP NetWeaver application server backups. We covered the building blocks for SAP deployments and the guidance for infrastructure. Now. Let's see how to design high availability and disaster recovery for SAP deployments on GCP. This is a reference architecture with high availability and disaster recovery implementation. We will discuss it in details.
Let's first start with the infrastructure layer. Google Cloud Infrastructure and Hypervisor provide live migration and host auto-restart features, which will keep the VMs running in case of a host system event like a software update or a hardware update or maintenance. Compute Engine Live Migration achieves that by migrating the VM instance to another host in the same zone without being stopped. For example, here hypervisors A, B, and C are three different hosts in the same zone. And in case of required maintenance of hypervisor A, where VMs 1 to 3 are hosted, these VMs can be migrated to hypervisor B and C without any unavailability. And this live migration can be performed by Google in case of infrastructure maintenance and upgrades, network and power grid maintenance, OS or BIOS upgrades of the host, urgent security related updates or host system configuration changes, and even failed hardware. This migration doesn't change the external or internal IP addresses or the instance metadata, storage, OS, and application state, or even the network configurations. Next is the database layer. And for the database, we have two systems that can be implemented for high availability. Scale up synchronous HANA system replication and scale out standby node. In a single node high availability system, Data is synchronously replicated from the SAP HANA primary database server to a secondary one in a different zone. However, in a scale-out high availability system, both master SAP HANA server and worker servers are in the same zone with shared storage and backup between them. We cover the infrastructure layer and database layer. Next will be the application and web layers. High availability in web layer can be achieved by having a cloud load balancer. And for the application layer, Linux clustering can be implemented. The SAP NetWeaver high availability cluster consists of two nodes. The primary node for the central services and the secondary node for replication services. With a shared file using NFS between them. Now let's see how disaster recovery can be implemented. There are multiple disaster recovery strategies depending on the required RTO and RPO, which are the recovery time and recovery point objectives. For example, if the required recovery time after the disaster is within days, and so is the recovery point, a simple backup and restore can be done for a disaster recovery. But if the required recovery time is few minutes after the disaster and the recovery point is required to be almost instantly up before the incident, a synchronous replication is required. Here is an example diagram of a disaster recovery deployment on GCP, where we have HANA system replication between two separate SAP HANA servers in two different regions. And this is another diagram showing an example of a full high availability and disaster recovery deployment. To learn more, please visit cloud.google.com/sap. And thank you for watching.